Okay, so this is, point your eyes up here, this is the, um, the quandary, and let's, before we do the quandary, of course, we've got to review sort of what it is that we did uh, to get there. These are the formulas we're using. We're going to use Newton's second law, which is F equals MA, right? We're going to use that we're accelerating. When we go in a circle, we accelerate centripetally, right? We're going to use that the force of gravity is this, and then we ultimately end up at this, which is not in the data packet. This force as a force is in the data packet. Uh, v squared over R is in the data packet. But what we're saying here is that the force of gravity equals a centripetal force. And there are just two expressions for the centripetal acceleration, so we end up with two different things, right? Um, for this particular quandary, we want to use this one, why? We don't know the time, right? Yeah, we don't know the time, but we do know the velocity. So that's the thing that, that makes you decide, right? This one's got velocity, this one's got time, the time to go around once. So we pull this guy out and we say uh, mass of the satellite times V squared over R is G, mass of the central body, mass of the satellite over R squared. And remember, you know, in some test question, if I give you both masses, the satellite mass and the, the central body mass, Remember that, that the one that cancels is the one that appears in both terms. And the one that, that appears in this term is, is the one that is actually moving at that velocity around that circle R. Does that help? Because kids confuse that sometimes. They'll cancel out the mass of the central body. Oops, right? Okay. Um, so yeah, anyway. And, rem and also remember that the satellite mass is much, much smaller, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is cancel that. And then what are we solving for? We're solving for the master of ceremonies, right? The central mass. Yes? Are we? Okay, so uh, how do we solve this algebraically for MC? Do we, uh, I don't know, cross multiply? I think so, yeah. V squared R squared is R G M C. We don't think too hard. It's just algebra, right? Okay, and then uh, what do we have to do to divide by R G, right? Da da da. Okay. And then and then we are going to cancel something, right? Right, and then so V squared R over G is MC. So now we can plug in our numbers, 83 meters per second squared times 3,400 meters. So if you, if you were off by like a power of 10, right, like, like 1,000, whoops, there's a factor of 1,000 right there, okay. And this is uh, meters, and then this is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11th Newton meters squared. Okay, something's wrong. Did we do this right? Is that right? How do we get kilograms out of that, though? You see what I'm seeing? I can't be right. You see how we've got kilograms squared in the bottom? Where do we, do we go wrong somewhere? Let's see if we get the right answer. Isn't what? It gets the right answer. Okay. Well, then it can't be questioned. <laughs> 83 squared times 3,400. Maybe I got it wrong last year when I made this PowerPoint slide. Right? Okay, so this is... Uh, I still don't see how we get kilograms out of there. Oh, wait, 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 hold on. I was too hasty. Hey, aren't there kilograms in Newtons? Yeah. Yeah, ha, 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 ha. Yeah, who's laughing now, right? Okay, so <laughs> meters squared cancels meters squared, right? And then a Newton is, oh, good God. So now we have 1 over seconds squared times meters divided by kilogram meters per second squared uh, over kilogram squared. Those are our units that we have left. It's a mess, but I think it works, doesn't it? 
These meters go the way of the bison. One over second squared cancels one over second squared. Kilograms cancels kilograms, and we have one over one over kilograms. I guess I've never worried about it before, but it works, yeah? One over one over kilograms is? Kilograms. Still kilograms, yes? All right. This is what I recommend. Set up the situation, the orbital condition, right? Solve it for what it is you need. Plug your numbers in, and then there we have it, right? So when we do our, <coughs> when we do our whiteboard problems, that's what I want you to do is show me first your algebraic solution, right? And then put your numbers in that, okay? So let's do that. 